Ooh. Scary. <laughs> uh, so arrays, arrays are awesome, isn't it? Um, so let's say you have an array, right? Uh, and you can log that array. The reason I'm showing this to you, of course you know what arrays are, I don't have to explain arrays to you. The reason I'm showing this to you is because I have this plugin installed just to make it clear that I can I can output stuff right inside the editor. So I just wanted to show you that so you know you know what's going on over there. Uh, <coughs> so uh, of course you can map over arrays, everybody knows that, there's nothing special over there. Especially if you're using React then you know you've been mapping over everything. Uh, and so you can map over an array and you can let's say double it, right? And it doubles the array, you can see again from the log here that it is doubled. Right, so this is not special, everybody knows this already, nothing really to explain. In case you did not know, what is really happening is that array.map is essentially returning a new array, so that's the return value, is a new array. Uh, and it is running the function that we have provided to map, and it is, op it is running that function on every single element in that array, right? So that's my talk, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, so obviously, uh, I, I, I have been, so I've been on this journey recently, well let me introduce myself first. So I, uh, I run this uh, service called Errorception, my name is Rakesh Pai, I run this service called Errorception. I am Rakesh314 on that bird website. Um, and uh, uh, I have lately been interested, in fact to the point of being obsessed with, with uh, writing error free programs. Now of course part of this is probably because I run Errorception, so I deal with errors on a regular basis and so that is something that's always there in the back of my mind. It's also, you know, talks by things like uh, uh, Martin Fowler has, has this talk on, on YouTube where he talks about the future of programming. And he talks about the fact that what is likely to be in the future is this, is this hardened discipline about, about being professionals about programming. And one of that is, one of the aspects of that is sort of making sure that your programs don't break. Uh, and also I think one of them was this language called Elm. Now I don't know if you guys are, you must have probably heard of Elm, but I don't know if you're really familiar with Elm at all. I'm a JavaScript guy, so I'm not like interested in things like Elm and stuff like that. But you know, it's always good to have a look at such things from these, from you know, the corner of your eye. And if you look at the Elm website, this is one of their banner claims, right? Is that there is no runtime exceptions. And that's very, very interesting. This means your programs cannot break. How can you write programs like that, that cannot break? It's very interesting. So, you know, this is, this is the kind of stuff that sort of got me into thinking about how can you write code that is sort of unbreakable. And uh, uh, of course, don't do any of this because I make money when you make errors. So, you know, don't do any of this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm just, just a thought process, right? Um, so, uh, this, this journey about trying to figure out how Elm makes that claim and how they can deliver on that claim is what got me into, into sort of thinking about the substance of this talk. Uh, and there are people who have tried to explain this before and they have all failed in, in various interesting ways. And so here I am to try to fail once again. So, you know, let's give this a shot. Uh, so it all starts with the humble array. Uh, and let us, so, you know, what happens if you map over an empty array? Well, it's an empty array, right? It's nothing surprising there. Everybody knows this. Uh, but what is interesting is this is not an error. You are asking it to double nothing. And it is not an error, right? It just skips over. You didn't have to write a null check. You didn't have to say if array dot length is greater than zero. You don't have to write that. You know, you don't have to have that null check. But it still works. It does not fail. And that's very interesting. Uh, this is, so, you know, just as an example, uh, let's say that from somewhere you happen to get a a NAN from somewhere, right? And then now your console, so now when I, so, you know, that's as expected, it's a NAN. What happens if I double a NAN? It's still a NAN. It's the same nothing case that continues. So it's similar to how arrays behave, empty arrays behave, right? It's the same nothing condition that continues. Uh, another example of this, this is all over the place. You just haven't noticed it. Another example, let's say you have a promise and I resolve the promise, right, with some value. Uh, then I can dot then over it and I can double that. Uh, right? And 
and my display, my sort of plugin thing does not work very well with promises because they are async or whatever. But uh, dot then is similar to dot map in the sense that you are sort of operating on the previous value. So, you know, it's very similar in that sense. And I'm doubling it. But, you know, of course, this will work as you expect. But in case I had this as a reject, right, in case this was a failed promise, then you would see that the dot then does not execute, right? Similar to how the previous things are, where the dot map does not execute in the case of an error. And non NAN sort of does not execute, it actually does execute, NANs do execute when you're doing the maths, but you know, as a result, like in, in JavaScript, you do not have arithmetic errors because of the behavior of, na of NAN, right? That's amazing. You can never have an arithmetic error in JavaScript because of this. That's, you know, that's a sort of property, a trait that, what is it that makes that work is what sort of got me thinking about this stuff, right? So let's start with a more concrete example. I've got this person object, uh, got some Facebook friends, 42, it's not a very realistic number. I mean, it should be more like 2000 or something if it's Facebook, right? Uh, and so uh, now let's say I can log person dot FB friends dot count, right? And that as you would expect is 42. Uh, let me just for the sake of display, break this up like this, right? Now let's say I want to find out this person's Twitter friends. So I can just search for TW friends, error. Obviously, because there is no such thing as TW friends, but then this is not the behavior I wanted. All the other things that I showed you so far, if there was nothing there, it just continued, right, without an error. But here we are having an error being thrown and we want to see how we can avoid this. Now, of course, the answer is simple. We just have person dot Twitter friends and person dot Twitter friends dot count and then you get undefined. Everybody's written code like this, right? Null checks. This is a null check essentially. Or, or, you know, uh, what is it called? Defensive programming, as some people call it. Ugly, right? What happens if this is five levels deep? You know, everybody's written code. Like, don't act like you haven't, right? <laughs> everybody's written code that does this, right? And this is ugly. We all, we all understand that this is ugly. So now, how can we, how can we use this behavior of array dot map and nans and promises and so on to help write code that cannot break? So that's where I want to get at, right? <coughs> so let's. Uh, Let's uh, start with, uh, uh, as with JavaScript, you always start with some functions. So I'll start with is nil and, uh, oh, this is not working out well. So, all right. So this is what my is nil implementation looks like. It, you know, if uh, it returns true, if the value is undefined or the value is null. So that's what it's doing. Uh, and let me also define a function called safe, right? And what this does is, uh, given a value, if the value is nil, sorry, if the value is nil, then it returns an empty array. Otherwise, it returns the value inside an array. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is so that now I can, so I can check, I can make a safe version of person dot FB friends. Right. And as you can see, that's a, that's an array with count inside of it. Uh, and I can just map over that to get the count. Right. And of course, now the answer is 42 that expect that's expected, <coughs> but it is inside an array. That's a little unexpected. We did not want that inside an array, but obviously it's inside an array because we have put it in an array over here. Right. But if you ignore that for a second, it is, it is 42 and we can now switch this FB friends to TW friends and it's an empty array. It did not break. We have been able to achieve this behavior of code not breaking even though it does not exist in, even though the keys that we are referencing does not exist, right? And it's very simple. This is the trick, right? We have just put it into an array. If it is nil, it's an empty array. Otherwise, it is a, it's an array with a value in it. Right. And by virtue of the fact that it is an array, you can now map over it. And we're using the behavior of arrays over empty arrays that map does nothing. So our code just works basically. Right. Are you with me so far? <coughs> okay. Excellent. So I could end my talk here. Like this is, this is, this is the point, right? Is that if you can take your data, put that inside an array, maybe an empty array, maybe not an empty array and you map over it then, you know, your program suddenly becomes safe. You cannot break, right? But arrays are not the best data type to use for this because, you know, arrays are loaded. They have got 
push and pop and splice and all of these crazy things. We don't want all of that for, for our use case here. So let's try to sort of make this a little uh, simpler uh, by creating our own data type rather than using array, which is a loaded data type, right? So I'll just keep this here for a second. Move this to a new file. So I'm just keeping an older copy of that because I'll come back to it in a second. <coughs> All right, so let's start creating our data type. What do we want? We want an object that we can map over. Um, and it turns out this thing has a name. It's called a functor. A functor is an object that has dot map on it. If you have come across this term, it's a, it's a word from functional programming. If you have come across this term before and you have thought it's really confusing, that's because people don't know how to explain it. Really, this is all there is to it. It's a function. It is a, it's an object that has got that dot map on it. That's a functor, right? I have said conditions apply because there are lots of rules about how dot map works. For example, an array dot map, right? It has to return an array. It has to operate on every single individual value. There are a lot of rules about how it works. I'm not going through all the rules. You know the rules, really. I don't have to explain them to you. But there are rules, and people are sticklers about those rules. So, you know, uh, it's important to stick to those rules. But overall, the idea is it's an object that has got dot map on it, right? So let's create an object that has dot map on it. It's not hard, so we'll create it. Um, so let's call our first object. So let's try to attack this problem first about the empty array. Let's try to replace that with an object of our own. So we'll call that object nothing. Okay. And uh, it has to have a map. Right, what is C? Uh, it has to have a map, and of course, in our case, the map does nothing. It just continues to return a nothing. Right, this is a valid functor. It's a map. It returns nothing. Right, the 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 reason it, by virtue of the fact that it returns nothing, it means it's a functor again that you have got, and so you can continue to dot map over it. Right, so it's like having an empty array, return an empty array, and then you can map over that to get another empty array, and so on. Right. And f so we can now replace our thing over here with nothing. And uh, uh, I'll come back to this display in a second. So you can see that Twitter friends is, is showing a weird thing. And obviously it's showing this weird thing because we have only got, you know, it's, it's basically showing this object. So it's mapped with a nothing over there. So just for the sake of display, I'll add a value here and I'll call that nothing. And you can see that it displays nothing. And again, just for hygiene, I'll just show dot value over here and you can see that that's nothing, right? Um, now let's, let's represent this value. So we need the equivalent of an array of an object uh, or a value inside uh, a functor, right? So let's do that. So uh, we'll make this a constructor. So this will take a value and this will return an object. Uh, and again, it has to have a dot map. That's the only real rule we have. And that takes a function and uh, it uh, <coughs> it runs uh, you know it invokes that function with that value except there is one more thing that needs to be done here uh, this is why functor rules and stuff like that are important right is that this has to like in arrays it is not sufficient if you just run the value on the function or uh, run the function on the value you have to also return an array so it has to be in the same container type right so that's necessary uh, so let's so we are creating the container types with safe. So we can just use that, you know, to create our container type. And so then this becomes just of that value, right? And so now you can see that uh, this is nothing. And if I change this to Facebook friends, then it's undefined what went wrong. Can anyone catch what I did wrong? What? I didn't get that. Ah, you're right, you're right. So just does not have a dot value. So let's put a dot value here. So uh, just of a value, right? And that's just 42. So just for cleanliness, I'll put this inside JSON stringify. Does not matter in this case, but like for example, if I had remove this line, then it becomes a little clearer what that is, right? So, uh, so that is, that is what a functor is. You have just learned a new thing in functional programming if you didn't know about it before. Uh, and it starts from that behavior about an empty array. It's such a small fundamental thing, but it can help you start writing programs that now become sort of unbreakable, right? Um, 
again, I could end my talk here, but there is one more point that needs to be made, is that you will occasionally run into this issue. Is, is everything good? I'm guessing everything's good, right? Okay. Uh, you will run into this issue once in a while, where you will have a functor inside a functor. Uh, that will happen, trust me. So I'll give you an example here. Let's say that I just create a function called uh, prop, right? And what this does is given a key and an object, uh, it returns the key of that object, right? So, uh, so I can like instead of calling dot map of this, I can just say uh, prop count. Right, and has the same uh, same effect, right? Are you with me so far? Did you get that? Uh, so alternatively, I can just get rid of this FB friends as well, and I can say map prop FB friends, right? And that's 42 as well. Uh, and if I switch this, of course, to Twitter friends, then that's nothing, right? Uh, but ideally, you would want this prop function's return value to be safe as well, because this could be null or undefined, and you want to handle that correctly, right? So you might say that make this safe. And now you've got a nothing inside a just, which is incorrect, right? You did not want this. So uh, I'll come back to my previous array case here. I'll just copy paste some code from here, just to make that easier to work with. Uh, so let's say add a prop and I think we can just copy all of this. Right, so this is the vanilla array case where we, I have not created all those functors. <coughs> um, and you can see that this is undefined and if I had, sorry, of course this is undefined, we want to get rid of value, we don't have a value. Uh, and so you can see that we are having an array inside an array, similar to how over here we had a nothing inside a just, right? Here we have an array inside an array, and so we want to get rid of that. And I don't know if you, you must have heard about all the hype around the smoosh method that happened in JavaScript, right? That that smoosh thing, the smoosh gate. Uh, this conference should have been called like smoosh gate or something like that, really, but anyway. Uh, so one thing that slipped by in the same update about sm that happened, so smush ultimately got renamed to flat, if you are aware, right? It got renamed to flat. Uh, but there was one more method that slipped into the specs at that time, which nobody paid any attention to, and that is called flat map. And that solves exactly this problem. So that is what flat map is meant for. So what you can do is now you can flat map, sorry, not flap. So you can flat map. So what that does is that basically does a map, but rather than putting it inside an array, it sort of just returns the value immediately. So you are already inside the context of an array rather than nesting another array inside of it, you know, you can just flat map and so that does not give you that wrapper array, right? Or the inner array actually in this case. Uh, and obviously now when I switch to FB friends, then it will give me the correct value, right? So let us try to replicate this behavior now in our functor. By the way, if you have a functor that does a flat map, that is called a monad. So monads are functors with flat map on it. It is that simple. I don't know why people make these things so complicated, but it is really that simple, right? Now, flat map is a new thing in JavaScript. Uh, before it was called flat map, monads have existed before as well. Uh, and they used to call it different things. So it, it has been called dot chain. It has been called dot bind. Uh, there are, there are, names that people, I think dot bind is in the Haskell world, they call it dot bind. Uh, but the name is not important, the idea is important, you know. Uh, so anyway, so let's implement a flat map in our case as well. So again, in the nothing case, a flat map is very simple. It just returns nothing. It's already in our container, right? And in the just case, a flat map takes a function and returns the, we are just not putting it inside a container this time. There is no safe wrapper around, right? So uh, it's just returning the function, uh, the result of invoking that function with that value. And so now we can change all of this to say, safe of uh, flat map, and now you get the value that you expect. And so if you switch to Facebook friends, you get 42. If you switch to Twitter friends, you get nothing. Uh, 
that is sort of the end of my talk but before i wrap up i will quickly show you that there are these things being used in the wild uh, i already showed you elm if you look at the elm documentation uh, there is this thing called a maybe maybe is the same as what i called safe uh, maybe is essentially the same thing and it's got a just and a nothing as you can see so exactly the same terminology uh, or you can go on to uh, npm and search for uh, for uh, maybe and there are all these things that that tells you about you know truth and true and myth and uh, you know what else uh, option t maybe baby just for the name you should use that uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so so this is this is available uh, also interesting to know is that promises have got this behavior built in already so in a promise if you inside a then if you return another promise right if the then that you have passed in that sort of disregards that promise or unwraps that promise right if you are aware of how that works so that is behaving like a monad as well so you have been using monads all this while arrays are monads you know it has got a flat map it is it has got a it's got a map it's got a flat map that makes it a monad uh, promises are monads it's got a then and it's got a then so it's a little weird you know it does not exactly follow the semantics of a monad but it behaves like a monad uh, you know so you are already familiar with monads uh, you have already been using them I'm just showing you how it can be done better to improve, to use this across all of your applications and improve the quality of all of your apps.